Hey everybody, it is Drac from DDO Players, and we have a special edition of the podcast for you today. We have a bunch of fine folks from Turbine with us. Uh, we will get to them in a second. We also have Bonnie Bew joining us again. We just can't get rid of her. I know, it's like I'm stalking you. <laughs> I think you are. And as I said, we do have a bunch of folks from Turbine, which I'd like to thank right off the bat for taking some time out of their day. And joining us, uh, we'll just go ahead and let uh, those folks introduce themselves so we can get to know their voices a little bit. Hello, uh, this is Cordovan. I'm DDO's community manager. Hey, this is Severlin. I'm the executive producer of DDO. And this is Tolero. I'm the e-commerce and marketing person. Hey, this is Sealstar. I'm a systems designer. And this is Knockback. I make dungeons. So it's you that we can talk to about the dungeons then. I see. <laughs> you should have a t-shirt that says that. I make dungeons. <laughs> you probably should. Date 29. Can you give us a quick overview of the vision that you had for Update 29? Well, so there's a couple of parts to Update 29. I will quickly talk about the dungeons. One of the things Update 29 does is finish up the storyline we've been telling all year about the return of Eratrakos and uh, the Codex of the Infinite Planes. And in Update 29, there's a couple of new dungeons that deal with more of Eratrakos' lieutenants, you fighting his lieutenants, including the return of everybody's second favorite devil after Eratrakos. And then we also have legendary versions of raids, including the Hound of Zoriat, uh, Tempest Spine, and the legendary Shroud, which is the one, uh, the one everyone has been looking forward to. And if you're wondering, how do I get these wonderful dungeons? They come with the Veil of Twilight Pack. So if you already own the Veil of Twilight Pack, you already own them. I would say also that this is our uh, final update of 2015, and it's a really big update for us. This is us setting a new uh, tier at our maximum level. Uh, for a little while now, we've had a maximum level cap of 28, and we're going up to level 30 here with this update, which really rounds out our epic level questing in the game, and uh, also provides a whole new set of sort of, I guess, what you might want to call end game feats and abilities and things like that as well. Right. Uh, there's a lot of new feats in this update, uh, ranging from some new uh, low epic level options for casters, uh, some new epic destiny feats that you can pick up at level 29, similar to the ones you picked up at level 26 and 28. And then at level 30, there's a set of legendary feats that are unique to that level that provide a lot of a variety of different things that'll help you in the legendary content. All right, and uh, that kind of brings me up to another question then. How do you guys go about creating the storyline for the updates overall as a whole? It can be any number of things. For Because we knew we were going to level 30 and we knew we were going to do uh, a legendary shroud, really the whole storyline we've seen for much of this year dealing with the devils has revolved around that. So back when we, you know, showed you uh, Shavarath again and, and, and Aaron Trakos again, we're building up to uh, Legendary Shroud. Sometimes we get ideas from Wizards of the Coast. They are like, hey, do you guys feel like doing X or Y? And we're like, yes, we would love to. Sometimes we have our own sort of game designery reasons why we want to do something, for example... The next update will not be about devils because you guys are tired of having monsters with the fiendish template and all that entails. <laughs> then sometimes we just think of cool things. Yeah, Game like uh, drinking games involving beholders. <laughs> <laughs> or, or mind flayers that build artworks out of flesh. Yeah. Woo-hoo. And then how about the dungeon? Is, do you kind of go the same route in when you're going to create a dungeon? Sure. Uh, sometimes, you know, somebody will have dungeon idea that just sounds like a cool idea independently of the storyline. Sometimes we have to, you know, we build dungeons specifically for a storyline. Sometimes it's a mix of the two. Uh, one of the dungeons, well, both of the dungeons in this update revolve around Eratrakos' lieutenants. And one, as I said, is a returning character where it's just like, well, yeah, the players want to see that character again. Let's let's make that happen. The other one was came out of us saying Eratrakos is giving powers to his lieutenants using codex pages from the Codex of the in, uh, from the Infinite Planes, what would be an interesting power for a lieutenant to have? And that resulted in a, a dungeon that brings together many classic DDO themes. 
So to kind of take a holistic approach to your question a little bit, you know, we have a general story outline for what we want the update to be. You know, this one is about the Codex War. And then we sort of figure out where the beats of that story should be as players go through the experience in a, you know, chronological or semi-chronological way. So that we're telling a story that leads up to, say, in this case, Legendary Shroud in our rating. And, and so a lot of times when we look at adventure packs like that, you know, we, we want to tell a story and then we figure out the best way to, you know, piece that story up into almost like chapters, as it were, and those chapters being quests. And then we leave it up to the designers to express their creativity and, and add those story elements into their quests and, and do that. It's sort of a collaborative thing. Is that probably about the best way to say it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So do you, like, come up with the theme of the dungeon first? It really varies. So uh, in this one we were just talking about where we came up with a power for the lieutenant, we then worked backward and say, where would you find this lieutenant? And there was an obvious answer. Other times when we did study in uh, Sable, we came up with the notion of doing something involving you know, a typical haunted mansion first, that we started with that as the premise and then figured out what would go into a typical haunted mansion. Okay, and then this leads me, since we're talking about dungeons, who and why did you come up with the metal naming theme that you have? <laughs> <laughs> That's a long tradition. <laughs> it is. is a long tradition, and indeed it dates back to people who are not actually in this room. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you're, you're probably been around the Tolaros. longest. You were here for yeah. Shroud, right? Yeah, I was here for original Shroud. Do you remember where the, what that came about? So, that actually, it goes even further back. I want to say some of the earliest sort of musical references that started happening were back during Giant Hold, even. So, like, mm. really far back. Oh, like, yeah. uh, there's some Duran Duran references in Giant Hold, and uh, so that... It would sort of come around to a couple people on the team sort of bantering back and forth. And then, you know, when you're trying to name a dungeon, you're like, what can I name this thing? And then they would go, oh, it kind of reminds me of this song. And then once that song made it in, then suddenly the game became not what songs remind me of my dungeon, but just how many different times can I get a song name? I always (laughs) assumed for for the original Veil of Twilight, somebody started with Running with the Devils because it was about devils. And then it just took off yep. from there. Exactly. I, I also think, if I recall correctly, that one of our main lore writers at the time was El Derudo. Yeah. And I know that he has yeah, a particular true. affinity for that style of music. Yeah. So that may have lent its, lent its influence in there as some as well. Yeah, I was excited when I uh, seen your preview video that the new one is called Creeping Death. So Yes. Uh, that was <laughs> the most serendipitous thing, because we'd already designed the dungeon, and we were like, oh, but it has to have a, a metal name. And, and there it was. So we could not do it. And what is the one thing out of Update 29 as a whole, uh, I guess this question for everybody, that you're most proud of out of Update 29? That's hard to say without seeing player feedback of what goes live. (laughs) (laughs) No, everybody everybody should say Legendary Shroud, and that'll make me happy. (laughs) I I think one of the things is the sheer amount of stuff in it. Like, usually for a bit, an update, redoing random loot so that you actually have a reason to look in chests would be a big deal. And it's kind of like a side note in this update because there's so much in it. Um, I think players will really enjoy putting together and collecting what they need for green steel. And I think the fact that we pushed to level 30 and we're able to have three three different raids and two dungeons to do is is a nice thing that I think... I think we'll give them a lot to do until we can get them some more in-game content. Um, so I'm a community guy, so I didn't directly make anything for this update. But I would have to say my the thing that I am most happy is being the rune arm that shoots bees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that what the rune arm does? Oh, yeah, wow. It shoots, it shoots bees, and then the bees do more piercing damage over time. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Man, I feel like the marketer. I'm like the logo. I'm so pleased with the logo. Maybe for this update name. <laughs> uh, on, uh, on my end, I'm I'm pretty happy overall with with how the uh, the new feats turned out. Kind of just as a whole thing. I think there's a lot of good new options, uh, both in the the uh, the low lo- low epic caster options that are out there. I think you're going to do a lot for helping casters get a little more up to speed. Uh, I really like some of the new epic destiny feats that are going to be out there. I think Dreamscape is is one of my favorites. It's kind of random and crazy, but uh, I was really happy with how it turned out, and 
we finally got the uh, the improved construct essence stuff in there, which is something that was kind of a pet project of mine that I've wanted in there for a long time. So happy to get that in there too. Well, casters have been asking for a long time for some help at the end game because we had been doing a lot, you know, with melee ranged. The problem is that uh, previously we had been doing things with heroic enhancements, and we knew we didn't want to boost them that way because in heroic the casters are fairly powerful. It's, it's in the epic levels that they fell behind, so we were glad that we were able to give them you know, more options, more abilities to be mana efficient, more ways to use spells in the epic mm-hmm. levels in order to increase their um, caster yeah. options. More damage on the stuff they're already casting. Yeah. And speaking of the rune arm that shoots bees, <laughs> how, what is the thought? Sorry, spoilers, but I couldn't help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is the thought process behind creating like the armor and the weapons for an update? So, j- just in particular, the case of the rune arm that shoots bees. I knew we were going to do legendary hound of Zoriat, and I said to myself, "I'd like a rune arm that shoots bees," and then I made it. <laughs> um, <laughs> With regards to the other items, a lot of times we take a look at uh, the kind of items that have been in the last couple of updates, uh, the kind of items that we've been hearing from players that maybe there aren't enough of, or the roles that haven't been filled recently. In the case of of Update 29, the named items outside of Greensteel cover most of the, if not all of the slots that Greensteel itself doesn't cover. So we were trying to kind of round out new loot choices, especially with us going to level 30. Uh, these are mostly, for the non-green green steel items, min-level 29 items. So a lot of that process starts from us saying, you know, what hasn't gotten some love recently? What uh, item types and character archetypes could use some new items or haven't had new items in a few levels or updates? I did want to just a uh, quick uh, add something to those who are hearing this that aren't at the end game at the moment. We do the there are heroic versions of the new quests that are coming oh, yeah. update twenty nine. Yes, and there is a, a few at least some of the loot also. Right, the the the, the ten oh. ten new yeah. items for the new quests all have heroic versions at min level fifteen as well. The right, if there's two new quests. quests. I'm sorry, what's that, Bonnie? The new quest, there's heroic versions. What's going to be the level, the min level for those quests? So those are come in heroic flavor at CR 15 and the legendary flavor at CR 31. Woohoo! I like CR 15. <laughs> okay, I'm excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we, you're talking about loot, but uh, the new random loot system, you were talking a little bit about that a couple minutes ago. This is something I didn't pay any attention to. Out of all the out of all the juicy stuff that's coming in update twenty nine, I was super focused on legendary green steel and legendary shroud, and this just blew past me. But apparently, forty five percent of the people who play DDO are, are this is the thing that they're the most excited about is the redesign of the random loot system. So, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. The random loot system it both has better quality loot, but also every time you open a chest. Uh, you'll have a chance of a piece of random loot that's significantly better for its minimum item level than normal. So one of our goals was, for most people, it's loot the chest so you can sell stuff and then get to the end where you look for sort of the specialized items. But I think for a while, people will be wanting to pay attention to what drops in the chest because there's a chance of it being better and then a small chance of it being even better than that for the min level and there there could be some slots that you may be filling even if you've tr'd a lot with random loot now that perhaps before you never had a reason to check the chests one of our goals is every time you open a chest it can be like you know like a, a special treasure day where you got something that perhaps um, is a lot better than you expected. So uh, the the fun of our goal is essentially opening chests is fun, as opposed to, oh, well, I've TR'd a lot and have a lot of blue items, so opening chests has no meaning for me other than perhaps selling it for plat. Even you, Dracula, I think you're going to uh, get some loot that you like. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and even I'm... the random number generator can't keep you down, Drac. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds a little retro to me because I think in the in like the early years that there was still that sense that that you could get some really fancy stuff out of the chest that was really good for use in the game. I'm thinking wounding and puncturing maybe that yeah, kind of stuff so. from back in the day. So that sounds exciting that it's kind of got that a retro feel to it, like making the random loot 
um, exciting again. There's also some geeky technical stuff that's happening behind the scenes that's exciting for us that you'll never see and maybe not care about. <laughs> <laughs> like many of all of the items now, for at least from random loot, have these scaling effects. So instead of having to create custom effects for every item in game, there are certain things that we can put on an item with a power level and the effect will just work. Which also means that there are certain places now in games where we can adjust a formula and all of the items that depend on that formula will automatically adjust wherever they are. As opposed to us having to go in and change every item in game. Oh, that if that makes kind of sense. Cool. And I know yeah. that's something that when you look at the loot, ideally you'll never know. But it's kind of exciting for what we can do with loot. Yeah. And it, also, it really speeds up the named item creation process also, like, immensely. It was a very nice experience this time around. <laughs> it also sets up a roadmap for future Kenneth Crafting updates as well. Um, it helps inform what we might be doing with Kenneth Crafting here in the future. Was this something you guys have been kind of thinking about in the back of your head, changing the whole loot system? Or what made you decide, you know, that it needed, like, this major overhaul? Because this seems like it's a pretty major change for it. Uh, this has been in the works since I've join the team when we looked at basically making loot is hard but when the system's kind of working against you it's doubly hard so this is something that we've been looking to do for a long time because it's hard to explain to players when they're looking why loot is hard yeah <laughs> it, it, i mean just i'm not even talking about balancing i'm talking about like making an item if, yeah. when you need to boost an item stat up the players imagine it's changing one item but when you have to modify 10 files create a new effect put the effect in test the effect that that adds to how much balancing we can do and how rapidly we can iterate so um that's all in sort of that's all been in the works part of it was just making random loot you know occasionally be cool now obviously if the better loot you have the less likely you'll see something good in a chest but we still want you to have to check out you might find a niche item or that perfect you know item for your rogue that may not be as well geared as your main or so it's always worth taking a look at that and then it sets up Kenneth Kenneth crafting which which is going to follow in at at some point, which is <laughs> nine, <laughs> nine months, right? Yeah, Some point, yeah. which is closer. Soon. I just don't want to commit. Soon. Soon. Yeah. Soon. So the yeah. real truth is we've been hearing from Tavern Keeps throughout Stormreach and the Forgotten Realms saying, please, we are out of storage space. Uh, can you please <laughs> we something? are out of storage space. <laughs> so, well, is Legendary Green Steel, which uh, to me was a hu- is a huge deal. Huge deal, because I love Green Steel so much. But is that going to benefit from like this more modular coding of of loot, or did you have to update the ten files for creating legendary green steel? Uh, no, it, it <laughs> uses the it uses scaling items, mm-hmm. um, which thank goodness yeah. because it's such a huge and complicated system. But also the legendary green steel um, also benefits from our new augment slotting tech. So in, instead of crafting in the traditional sense, you create these um, green steel augmentations and slot them into the green steel weapons that you create. Um, and then there's a whole sort of interface for doing that, and that's how you mix and match the effects. Yeah, it's it's now, a new UI like, that, uh, that is new to U29 and right now is used for, for green steel pretty exclusively. Yeah. So why did you go to that tack with these augments rather than... Because you're very, very faithful to heroic green steel in terms of structure, which I appreciate. But this is a really new and different thing to be using the augment slots and a different set of augment slots for the weapon effects. So why did you go that route? Because the, the crafting with that many iterations or interactions that green steel requires is clunky. And if you mess up a green steel, essentially you have to use a yellow dopant to basically start over. But in this, you would be able to take out the piece that you messed up and maybe replace it so you don't have to start from scratch. And we thought that that was a better, that was more player friendly and would be more fun. Yeah, heroic green steel, even in its current form where you can see the recipes, is not exactly, well, not exactly what I'd call user friendly. And this new system does, goes a lot way toward, a lot further toward that. It also fits with a lot of our, our recent you know augment systems, so people are familiar with augments. And and I, I guess I don't know you know for those who are less familiar with heroic green steel, legendary green steel will allow you to slot in 
various augments, and we have, if I'm not mistaken, what, literally hundreds of literally different hundreds. augments here. So there, the amount of variety that of your weapons and that that you can craft coming here with legendary green steel is just huge. So you know, if you haven't really touched heroic green steel much, uh, maybe you started playing after you know uh, after the sort of the big wave of of heroic shroud. This is something you might very well want to take a look at because we have just got some incredible things that you're going to be able to make here with update 29. Yeah, it does sound the augments allow you to potentially have a lot more different combinations that are custom for whatever you want your character to be doing compared to heroic. And I was really excited about the part where you can upgrade whatever tier you want to. You aren't stuck with a fixed order like you are with Heroic. Yeah, that was another sort of player-friendly option. Finally, for technical reasons, um, I will say this. If anyone has ever crafted, you know that when you open up some of the crafting, how long it takes. One of the reasons for that is there are so many crafting recipes in the game now that the crafting system is sort of expanded beyond perhaps what it was initially designed for. And adding thou- like literally <laughs> thousands and thousands of green steel to an already large amount that would even bog down the crafting system even more is something that we were kind of concerned about with the green steel. And finally, right now... The, the current augment system uses the old code, and even though there are some pretty big hurdles to go over in converting it, we at some point would like to see a real sort of GUI for uh, previous augments to eventually move over to the new system. So, so there was that. There was also that bonus in developing uh, this interface. Okay, cool. And we did have a question from our uh, chat room. James is asking, uh, you did talk about Kenneth crafting a little bit ago. Does that still work the same in Update 29 as it did? Was there any changes done at all to no. Kenneth crafting? Yeah, the Kenneth crafting as you can craft today is uh, exactly how you'll be able to craft come Update 29. Uh, none of the properties, effects, or the way you do it is changing for Kenneth crafting. Additionally, if you choose to level up in Kenneth Crafting now, you know, that is something that we are going to be taking into account as we work toward the new Kenneth Crafting. So let's say you're level 150 now, you're not going to have to worry about being reset back to 1, for example, with the new system. And one more question about Legendary Green Steel. I, I can't remember. The base items, do those only come from the Codex runes that are being added with Update 29, or do they also drop in the raid? Uh, they only come from the Codex runes, as far as okay. I'm aware. Okay, just wanted to double-check, because I couldn't remember. So that moves us into the Legendary Raid discussion. How did you pick the raids that you did to do the Legendary upgrades on? Well, the, you know, Green Steel and the Shroud go hand-in-hand. Hand. So there was an interest in doing Legendary Green Steel, which meant we thought about doing Legendary Shroud. And also, it's our most popular raid in the game, so obviously it's always been on our list of things we wanted to expand to a higher level. It, it sort of went like, okay, we're going to take the first most popular raid, and then we're going to take the second most popular raid, and then Steel Star really wants to do Hound of Zoria. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much how it was. <laughs> Probably because he wanted to make a rune armor that speeds. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that might have had something to do with it. <laughs> Uh, but the other thing is, too, you know, this is a level cap increase for us. So when we started looking at, well, what what should we debut level 30 with? The Shroud made uh, just a lot of obvious sense, uh, particularly because, you know, Legendary Green Seal also made a lot of sense for sort of our, our level, uh, level cap sort of crafting and all that sort of thing. And so once that fell into place, it really was just a matter of, of figuring out what else to do. Yeah, I... Uh- one of the things I, I kind of like about where we ended up with with uh, Hound and with Temp is that they're sort of polar opposites in terms of kind of content you can find at this this level 30 legendary space now, where Hound is this sort of smaller experience, but it's really intense and requires a lot of teamwork and there's a lot going on constantly, as opposed to Tempest, which is sort of large and expansive, uh, but a little bit more, a little less intense and a little less dangerous, if you will. So we also you... wanted to have a free raid yep. uh, with a, in a day 29. Really uh, and so Tempest Fine made a lot of sense there because the heroic version is free. Yeah. Yeah. So is there any thought in maybe going back from the raids that you didn't pick and ever legendarying them up? That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> what What's the most likely next candidate out of the existing raids that aren't legendary to become legendary? Uh, at this point, we're actually thinking that 
we are probably going to be focusing on new content. So it would be if we got a whole bunch of feedback that there was a specific raid that the players wanted to see, we'd certainly consider it. Like against the Demon Queen or Twilight Forge. Yeah, <laughs> That's I mean, my feedback, but... <laughs> right, if, we, if we had a lot of feedback, we're always looking for cool ideas from players of things that they'd see that we would go and, and sort of uh, revisit and make into Legendary. So we're always on the lookout for that, but we'll probably be focusing on new content for a while. Just to be clear, we do have the Demon Queen. Epic. Well, yeah, it's epic, epic yeah. 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 So I have. there's another vote in chat for the Twilight Forge and, and the Titan Raid. <laughs> That's not epic, so that would be super cool. I I mean, give you lasers. I love that raid. That <laughs> be, but Lucky Josh and I might be the only people of that opinion. <laughs> you know, we have, we have had internal conversations about what we would do for the Restless Isles area were we to epify it. Yes. Um, that's not well, something we've, well, okay. you know, we've moved forward on in terms of any any kind of commitment that we make here on the air today. But it's something we've taken a look at in terms of, you know, how would we deal with that wilderness area and how would we deal with the raid? You know, so the, those discussions have taken place. And really, not every raid can have a rune arm that shoots bees. <laughs> <laughs> well, that shoots lasers. Yeah, that shoots yeah, that's that's right. what I've been telling Steelstar all along, and he hasn't listened to me. I'm like, not every raid can have a rune arm. That, that, and he just looks at me blankly like, <laughs> what, why not? So I'm glad you said that. Thank you. <laughs> so with the legendary raids, of course, is coming the new raid rune system. Why did you feel the need to go away from the 20th list and go with the new system? So one of the things we'd been hearing pretty consistently with the last few raids, uh, kind of going as far back as, as Fire on Thunder Peak and, and Death Worm, but mostly with the Mark of Death and Defiler, is that a lot of the, the very top-end players felt like it was more worth it to them to run on normal 20 times than to ever run on Elite, even if their group can handle Elite. There are also things like people wanting their raid completions to persist through reincarnation, and those that both like doing the TR loop and running raids feel like those two things are at odds with each other. Uh, so this system rewards the multiple runs and still lets you build toward a guaranteed item while also persisting through reincarnation and letting your higher difficulty runs be more rewarding. All right. Uh, you have any other questions on the runes, Bonnie? No, I was just thinking, because at first, at first I wasn't totally on board with the not being passable in chess. The more I thought about it, the more I'm like, okay with that. And otherwise, I'm really excited about these runes because I think it, it gives me an opportunity to get stuff for characters I don't play as much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, rather than having my, my two favorite characters that I play on everything, and they're the ones that I run on these most epic and legendary type raids. So I get to spread the wealth. So I'm kind of excited about the Codex runes becoming available. And one question, do the different legendary, are there different types of Codex runes? Like, do, do you get a certain type from uh, the Tempest Spine then, and it's a different type from the Shroud? Or are they all the same type of rune? Uh, each raid has its own kind. Where, do they store in a bag? They, I believe they do, yes. Okay. Cool. Um, so you would if you you would trade in stuff from like the Tempest Spine Codex runes for for Tempest Spine loot named loot, and the Shroud would only trade for the Shroud like base items, right? That correct. kind of stuff. Okay, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> to expand ready. on what you said too, sometimes like your 18 Codex runes in, but the your friends really or your guild really want you to play a specific character that you have been working on, it's nice to play that character and then pass the rune to the person who you're trying to get the item for. So how much time do I have to get ready? Because I, I have to get some characters up to level 28. <laughs> when is update 29 coming? Like, am I out of time or do I have another week or what? Yeah, it, you're close. This is these, uh, the only problem with having our interviews today is that things are in flux <laughs> what I tell you now could be different a couple hours from now. If so, the power keeps oh going out in Massachusetts, who yeah. knows? Yeah. <laughs> tell us, tell I would us. Say you are probably, probably pretty close. So if you haven't done it, you might want to get on you know, tonight. So I, have to, I need to play for the next 24 hours. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> At least. Yes. I'm, I'm not saying you have to. Oh, my gosh. Hurt, so. Oh, man. <laughs> 
So that's oh, the no, best we're going to get out of you, huh? Brew some yeah. more coffee, Drac. <laughs> I'm sorry. We just, you know, it, uh, it, there was a hope that we could announce our exact update time at the time we do these interviews, but we're just not. We're right on the cusp of being able to to let you guys know, but we're not quite there yet. What, are you testing? Are you QAing right now? Is that the power the power went out. We don't know if the build is okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my god! Oh no! Our power went out <laughs> right in the middle of the night. I don't know what the state of the build is, and we still can't prop up our internal QA you know, server. Apparently, the turbine building has the same kind of random number generation. <laughs> the hamsters got tired. <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, crit fail roll. Oh no. Well, good like, luck. I hope it's sucks. okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's something that will. It's not any kind of major issue. I mean, it's all taken care of now. But it, it did delay things just enough to make it so that we can't answer your question here today during the interview. Oh man, Cedric. Uh, we, we tried. You did this. You we did this. tried at least. So, <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll know soon. Hopefully, you'll get that straightened out. And we'll since excited. since Please Tolero fight. is here, we can ask her about the new DDO store. Yes. How do you feel the implementation of that has gone? Well, when you're overhauling uh, a system that's been in since 2009 with none of the people who were here in 2009, except <laughs> me, um, it is definitely challenging. Um, there are many areas that we're pretty happy with, and then other areas that we're like, eh, we need to tweak some more stuff. Uh, so we still have work going on uh, in uh, with our store engineers, essentially. Uh, so we're hoping to roll out another deployment of the store. It'll Visually, it'll look very similar, but what, what we're trying to get to is some of those features that people are looking for, like speeding up the purchase flow so that you're not having to constantly navigate back to every single item that you want so that when you're doing those bulk purchases, that can go more quickly for you. Some tweaks that are more technical things on the back end for myself and for the other quartermasters that help us come up with new and interesting kinds of sales. Like we were really sad to lose our, our tech that was letting us do determine your discount. So we're trying to see if we can get some of these things in pretty soon. So Also uh, vanity codes. Uh, yep. like, yeah, which is definitely the, the semi-technical codes. name for being yeah. able to call it, you know. Rune 20 instead of... Instead of H-J-Y yeah, uppercase right. exclamation point. Yeah. We were wondering about that. Because yeah, it's, no, that's... it's like mysterious code for the yeah, past, the yeah, past it's, month. It's as painful for us as it is for you guys because on our end, we don't get a choice over what the code is. It generates them in batches and we must choose which of the ugly codes is the prettiest. <laughs> <laughs> So that that is high on our pain radar as well as like I said the bulk purchasing. So and then you were on DDO Cast a while ago and you mentioned that you were looking at maybe doing some VIP only codes. Yep. Do yep. you have any update on that or any? So right now we're running some tests, um, some technical tests, just to make sure that it's going to work properly. What I'm actually working on is we are doing a small test batch of codes targeting people who previously purchased the Traveler's Trunk. Uh, we made changes to the Traveler's Trunk on a couple of the potions, and so we want to be able to help people who bought the trunk the first time so that they don't feel like they got you know the bad end of the stick by buying it early. And so the best way to do this is to deliver the potions that got changed. So we're like, you know what, this is the perfect opportunity for us to test out how it will work when we try to give each person their own unique coupon in a big batch like that. And if that goes smoothly, then that paves the road for us to start lighting up even bigger programs where I can start doing these VIP-only coupons and things like that. All right, excellent. Well, we I think a lot of people are looking forward to that, to seeing you know how that's going to work and uh, what uh, those codes might entail for us as VIP. Yeah. So. Uh, the VIP program is something I've been investigating this year. Um, there's some areas where I'd like to do some improvements for the package for people. Because I know that while getting, you know, getting access to the quests and getting access to the races and classes is super important, I know that there's other things that we could be doing for VIPs, or maybe there's features that VIPs get that they're like, eh, I don't care about that. Give me something cooler. Um, so we're trying to reevaluate that. With the, ten with the 10th year anniversary coming up, that's a really good time for us to sort of go, okay, this is a time where if we're going to sort of uh, reassess what it means to be a VIP and give you cooler things, this is a great time to do it. Oh, wow, because I thought gnomes were like, you know, my gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, gnomes are the minimum of what we should be doing for gnomes you. Gnomes are VIP. for me. <laughs> well, and speaking of those gnomes, or as I call it, gnomageddon, <laughs> is there any update on that? We're working on them. The biggest question we have is whether we want, what, assuming we can get in Deep Gnomes for the initial release, whether we want Deep Gnomes to be a, a second race 
or whether we want deep gnomes to be some sort of iconic, which is more work, and then it's a question of, well, what class should they be? Because then we can make the deep gnomes more Forgotten Realm focused, because they start at 15 and they can start in Forgotten Realms. But that takes more work, because there's stuff about the iconics that is uh, that's different than normal races. So that's our big discussion right now, as the as art provides happy gnome looks. <laughs> I am happy. And, and, and here's and a suggestion. Because I'm, fun stuff. I'm yeah. thinking because of in, in honor of like Jan Janssen, like the most famous gnome from Bald, from Baldur's Gate Part Two. How about a rune arm that shoots exploding turnips for the gnomes? <laughs> um, but you should see steel stars. I will keep I'm... it in mind. <laughs> That's totally a gnome thing. But that's uh, cool. Uh, if, you, if you have the opportunity to do an iconic deep gnome, I think that would be wonderful because I, I associate deep gnomes more with the Forgotten Realms and that lore. So it'd be awesome to have that if you, if you guys have the time to develop it. I would say just to, to provide a little bit more of an answer as well. Right now we have a lot of art for gnomes, uh, but we haven't yet progressed into a lot of the systems work. So some of the questions we've been getting about, well, which stat's going to do what and all that sort of yeah. thing, those are things that, that we have yet to do. To, uh, decide on. There, there are other burning questions yeah. that need to be answered, like how do gnomes dance? Oh yeah, right. oh yeah, twerk, twerk. <laughs> we don't need the twerking gnomes. <laughs> oh, we've discussed this before, Bonnie. No the twerking pony. gnomes. Oh, <laughs> uh, so that's I think all the questions I had today, Bonnie. Do you have anything else? Well, I think we, we're, we're about at the end. So to wrap up, I'm going to ask. What does it take to get a job as one of Eritrico's lieutenants? I'm just, I just want to know for a friend. Like, are there any particular? Is there, is there a career path? Is there like a, you know, a, a demon lord trade uh, school for, kind of thing? First, you have to be able to bake cookies because, okay. yes, because the dark side has cookies. Check. Okay, I can. Uh, you have to be. I can get the, the cookies from the jester count. Uh, for evil cookies, yes. The main, the main qualification is being evil. Uh, the other main qualification is a willingness to use mysterious magical artifacts that may do incredibly strange things to you without asking any questions. Check. Okay. Two out of three. Uh, <laughs> experience in an evil internship helps. Yeah, that's oh, true. Man. Yes. And don't expect to get paid. Internship. I need an evil internship. I would love to be Harry's minion. I would. <laughs> He's a rock star. And I noticed he got kind of like a makeover because he has like this emblem on his chest now and he has like kind of fancy hands. Like maybe he reincarnated into a warlock because he got really excited. <laughs> <laughs> he's been uh, fooling around with the Codex an awful lot. Uh-huh. And has left its mark on uh, Harry. So that's, that's why so he looks... his super His superhero name would be like the Codex Demon or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think we'll wrap this up here with if you've been paying attention to. Anything that uh, Wizards of the Coast has been saying lately, they have just been teasing me to no end with what I think is going to be Ravenloft for 5e. So do you guys want to tease me with Ravenloft at all about anything, maybe? I can make no comment on what Wizards of the Coast are doing. I will say, answer foggy. Ask again later. <laughs> <laughs> and neither confirm nor deny yeah, anything thanks. having to do with That's strong. what I figured. All right. Well, thank you guys for taking some time out of your day. I know it was crazy with your power outages and trying to get that build out, and hopefully it's going to go good. So we hope that we'll get some updated information on 29 soon. Yep, I'm at- yeah, update 29 is, is all but all but done. We're just working on really the final steps to get it out the door right now, and hopefully we'll have some more information for you real soon on that. Thank you. May the may the builds ever be in your favor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So thanks again, uh, everybody, for taking some time out of your day. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. So joined us live in the chat room. I will be editing the show up, and we'll have it in our iTunes and our YouTube feed probably within the next few days. So if you didn't get a choice to uh, join us live, you can listen later.